Hi everyone, this is Keenly, and we're going to try a lab where we're going to figure out static and kinetic friction for two different types of situations. One where a felt side is rubbing against the track. Now, when we raise this up until it breaks free on its own, that's going to be static friction. That's going to be where the static friction breaks loose. For kinetic friction, we're going to raise it as we tap on it until it starts sliding on its own and that's going to be for kinetic friction. Static friction should always be stronger than kinetic friction so the angle for static friction should always be greater than the angle for kinetic friction we're going to measure the angle with this protractor right here that I'm going to zoom in on as the situation happens. So we need to know a couple more things. The mass of this cart by itself is 507.9 grams. The mass of the block is 126.5 grams. We're going to do felt as well as the wood surface. And that one should give us a different coefficient of friction in different angles. So let's try to get those angles and we'll see how the lab turns out. We're gonna run each situation three times so you can average those three angles to determine your coefficient of friction in each situation. We're going to try it now with the wood side against the track. We're going to raise it till it breaks loose again. We're looking for static friction. Right about there. Okay, it's moving really, really slow, but there's the angle measurement for the wood side down. Trial two, wood side down. Right there, it breaks loose. And the angle is that right there. Trial three, wood side down. There it's moving. The angle for wood side down, static friction, third trial. So now for kinetic friction, we're going to raise this and we're going to tap on it to kind of break that static friction so we should only get the kinetic friction. So I'll start right rising it or raising it. Right there. And so just to make sure. Right there. That's where it starts moving on its own. So there's the angle measurement for it. Again, that's wood down, wood against the track for kinetic friction. Trial two, kinetic friction.
trial two, wood side down, kinetic friction. Trial three, wood side down, kinetic friction. Trial three, wood side down, kinetic friction. Felt side down, so it would be felt in the track. We're going to raise it until the cart breaks free and starts sliding on its own. Right there. And the angle measurement is that measure as close as you can okay here's our trial with the felt side down with our cart on top raising this up until it breaks loose and starts moving on its own Right there. And the angle measurement trial three felt side down, static friction. There's the angle for trial three, felt side down, static friction. Felt side down for kinetic friction. looks good. So there's the angle for felt side down kinetic friction. Trial two, felt side down kinetic friction. It should be close. That's a good source of error right there. There's the angle. Trial three, felt side down, kinetic friction. There's the angle for it, trial three, felt side down, kinetic friction. Okay, so we've got the angles for both the kinetic and static friction for the felt side against the track and for the wood side against the track. Now we need to analyze that data to figure out what the coefficient of friction is in each case. So we've got our ramp and our block. Now, whatever angle this is, and it will depend, depending on which situation we are, we're in, what happens is, through the magic of geometry, when we draw our components, so that's the weight of the object, 
we're going to have one that's perpendicular to the surface. I call it force perpendicular. And one component that's parallel. I call that force parallel. Not force 11, force parallel. And again, through the magic geometry, whatever this angle is, this is the same. So if we know the combined mass, and remember we got to change that to kilograms, we can figure out the weight for this side. And if we know this side and the angle, we should be able to figure out the force perpendicular and the force parallel. And then we should be able to use that information because gravity acting down, normal force going this way, and our friction back this direction. If it's moving at a constant speed, that means that this normal force should be equal to the force perpendicular. And the force parallel should equal the force of friction. And between those, you should be able to figure out what the coefficient of friction, whether it's static or kinetic, is for that situation. Go ahead and make those calculations and see what you get. Thank you, and tune in for more physics videos and labs. Bye.